Happy New Moon. If you're new to this channel, my name is Abby. Hello there. Oh, I wanna squish your face. <laughs> what I do on this channel is every new moon, every full moon, I do readings from my Cycle of the Moon Tarot Journal that I designed myself just to share and give back to the community. And I talk all things tarot. I talk all things psycho-spiritual. I talk all things self-development and moving forward, progressing forward, energetically pushing yourself to do more than what you are doing just at this moment. So if this is your bag, please go ahead and like and subscribe and I will do my best to continue to sing and dance for you darling so that this is worth your while, worth your time, worth your input and I look forward to conversing with you soon. So I have this gray spot in my hair that's been expanding. I call it my little conduit. I think the ethos is downloading directly into my head. <laughs> Before we hop in into this reading, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about where the spirit of this reading is, is coming from. Um, a couple days back, like the day prior to the new moon, I did a live on Instagram just to kind of visit because I just came back from taking a little time off because I wasn't feeling well. I caught a bit of the head cold and wasn't quite 100%. And so I took some time away um, and I came back and I wanted to chat with the community and I wanted to chat with everybody. And one of the topics that we covered or that we chatted about amongst ourselves was self-love. And so this new moon, I selected a reading um, that I've titled Relationship With Myself. So my game plan is to read this collectively, put this reading in a collective format. However, you can totally pull the same cards for yourself and maybe read it individually for yourself. So this doesn't have to be the only way in which this reading can be useful for you, but you can totally pull the question, slow it down, jot it down, whatever you need to do, and, and read for yourself. See what your relationship with yourself currently looks like and maybe even get some intuition, some wisdom about how you can improve it moving forward. Something else that you can do, I do read professionally myself. You can also reach out and say, hey, Abby, can you do that same reading for me? And we will set up a time. <laughs> so not a problem at all, you all. So let's go ahead and move you above head so you can see my table space and we'll get started. Hello, thank you so much for hanging in there while I get set up, while I get prepped. So I'm going to leave in some of the little nuances, the little tidbits that I do to kind of get myself in state because, you yeah, know, why not? Why not share a little bit of the process and the practice that makes me feel all warm and fizzy so that you can um, make one for yourself? You know, that's always nice and fun. So the oil that I'm using today is the Phoenix oil that was in my most recent Witch's Moon. I know I had said in that video, which you'll probably see here soon, that I was like, meh, on the fence about it. But when I am thinking about self-love, when I'm thinking about the relationship we have with ourselves, I'm, I'm inspired to resurrect it like a phoenix from whatever ashes there may be at the moment. So that was the reason why I chose that particular oil, because it's just like, you know what, this has meaning this has gusto this has resurrection this has change from what was to what is and i love one thing i love about the 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 story of the phoenix is that it's a cycle of burning of decomp of resurrecting of repluming and becoming your biggest self over and over and over and over again like this is a process and i feel like with any um, with self-love, with any habit, with any ritual, it's about the process, not necessarily the end result. And you may have to do it again. <laughs> so as much as we'd like to just be healed and have all of our self-love woes done, that's not necessarily the case. Something else will show up because our life continues on. It doesn't just finish. So just to go ahead and get started, this is coming out of the Cycle of the Moon Tarot Journal. Um, this is a design of mine that I have for sale on Etsy and on Amazon. So both are freely available and they are a year of full moon and new moon spreads. So the spread I'm going to be using today, because I use it for myself, if you cannot tell. Oops, which one? Not this one. 
ah, there we go. This is the relationship with myself. So my game plan is to cultivate this so it's more of a collective read. So this is our relationship with ourselves. This is our uh, relationship with us as a society, as us as a group. So I'm thinking about us collectively, not just the individual. But you can totally take these questions and shift them so that they're specific for you. So they're specific for your client. They're specific for whoever it is that you're you're reading about, be it yourself, your dog, or anybody else. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my standard Rider Waite Smith for this reading, and I think I'm going to also pull in my Oracle of Echoes as like a final message at the end. I don't know if you've ever seen this deck, but I'm still perpetually proud of the artwork, and I've been so attracted to watercolor recently that I've been using my Zillich, I've been using uh, my Bone Stone, and I've just and I've been learning about watercolor and there's just something something mesmerizing about watercolor so that's what we're working with right now all righty i am going to use my standard writer weight for the core so i want to make sure I, I, I provide the message and i read this the fastest and we might pull in the other one we might we might we'll see we'll see how it goes so let's go ahead and get a shuffle going make sure we're upright perfect okay and we're going to deal face down and then we're going to flip them over talking about each card as we go. So the first, let me read off the questions for you while we're shuffling. The first question is what is my relationship with myself like right now? So this is what is our relationship with ourselves like right now? What, where is my relationship with ourselves strong? Where is our relationship with ourselves lacking? What do we need to do to improve and heal the relationship with ourselves? What else do we need to know right now? Advice on how to begin, <laughs> teachers, um, and advice on how to thrive. So not just start, yes we start, but then we kick off and then we thrive. <laughs> so that's the game plan. That is the game plan. So if I need to, I'll scoot this over. I think we're golden. So I'm just asking the cards to go ahead and arrange themselves as they feel best suited and help me get tapped in so that I can start this off for us. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna lay it down. First card. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I believe I am still in frame. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle my oracle and just have them ready for us later. Any additional wisdom you want to provide for us? Anything else that we need to know? Okay, right there off the top. Pull three cards. One, two, three. And what I'll do is if I have any additional questions on the cards, I'll pull additional writer or maybe my zillage. So it just depends on how it feels. So let's go ahead and put this off to the side. Let's start off with the shadow card. It makes me happy. Oh, how cool is that? Okay. So for me, when I'm thinking about the relationships that we have with ourselves, oh my gosh, I think if you are a part of the Instagram little, you know, chat that I had, this card came up for us then too. <laughs> so that's kind of, uh, um, kind of amazing. So I'm wondering if, if there might be a little bit more to this than what's directly on the surface. Because often when it comes to the Ace of Pentacles, I think about it in relation to, you know, physical manifestations, um, physical things, money, materials, uh, work efforts even. And I'm wondering if sometimes we put a lot of value, a lot of self-value, a lot of self-worth in what we do. And there's... <sighs> There's nothing wrong with it if it's useful, if it's productive, if it's not useful and you're kind of like chewing at your own heels because you're not doing something, then that can be problematic. Like we're, we're not able to fill that need or fill that void that you're experiencing. So I feel like, like the physical manifestation of our self-love to ourself or our, yeah, our relationship with ourself is going to be showing up for us today. So for question number one, what is my relationship with myself like right now? And the card I have is the Nine of Swords. Oh, my dear sweet soul. So I hope you can see it. If not, we're going to scooch it up just a bit. So the Nine of Swords is the thinking. It's the rethinking. It's the overthinking. It's the thinking again. It's the reanalyzing. It's the not trusting your first thought. So you have to rethink your thought because you didn't think you thought what you thought. So you're coming back to rethink the thought that you thought you thought. And all you do is shove yourself into a circle, a repeat pattern of behavior that you start to spin and mull around in circles, essentially getting nothing done. 
<laughs> so our relationship with ourselves right now I feel like is still very much in a headspace no feels in this card at all this is all heads this is all thought this is all we can't quite see the forest beyond the trees we're just right here in this moment anxiety ridden stressed out often neurotic a bit emotional we get it honey and you pretty much you need a hug <laughs> i understand we need hugs i think even as a country we need a hug right so if i could give everybody a hug right now just if you're feeling any sort of way think right now that abby is giving you the biggest bear hug you've ever needed Okay, just from me to you sweet souls and let me know that you gave it to yourself. Like go ahead and type that into the comments. I gave myself a hug. Please do that because I want you to have a hug from me. So for question number two is where is our relationship with ourselves strong? Where is our relationship with ourselves strong? That's interesting. I like that in a way. So I have the seven of cups. The seven of cups to me talks about options, talks about opportunities, talks about, um, Oh gosh, endeavors. So I'm feeling like a touch of decision fatigue. We've created so many options and opportunities for us. Now we don't know what to choose. <laughs> I guess that's the hazard of being a consumerism society. We consume, we grasp, we look, we want options, we want info, we want stuff, we want stuff, and then we don't know what to pick. We want all these things, but then we don't know what to pick. So that is a literal card for me is about decision fatigue. When you're sitting in this moment, oh my God, I have these things that I can do. Now what? And so we're looking for answers. We're seeking answers because we're not trusting ourselves. We're not trusting that we know what is best for us. So we put all of our faith into other people, into outside resources to tell us, to tell us what we need, what do we need to do. And then we wonder why we're not fulfilled. And we wonder why we're not fulfilled. So I had to just beat that out for a second. <laughs> Where is my relationship with myself, with ourselves lacking? Where is it lacking? hermit card and i had to take a deep breath for that because that to me rang so true the hermit card is about quiet introspection 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 y'all can talk shit about me please <laughs> that quiet turn in that self-reflective self-reflective introspective um self-critical we lack self self the turning into the self the looking inward at the self we lack the ability or maybe the skills or even the wisdom or the know-how to look internally so all this external influence we forget how to look look <laughs> to look internally and i feel like that really wonks us up a bit especially as a society especially as a collective i feel like we deal with a gosh a mass society of not knowing what we want and so all of these meditation retreats and all of these, um, again, myself included, divination practitioners, all of these spiritual counselors, all of these therapies, all of this um, consultants, all of these things are in place because we're looking externally for what can be found internally. Nothing, nothing can be fixed externally that does not happen internally first. Mic drop. <laughs> all right, dear soul. So let's continue. What do we need to do to improve and heal the relationship with ourselves? So what do we need to do to improve and heal the relationship that we have with ourselves? Oh my goodness. So the five of pentacles for me, I think I might pull additional cards on this, but the five of pentacles for me is often about, sometimes it's deprivation. Sometimes it's being a little bit left in the cold. I feel like we have a shit ton of privilege and we don't even know it. We don't even appreciate it. We, what is it that I heard, um, not even recently, this has been like something that's been in my head for a long time. The majority of the planet, so this whole big ball, you know, going around the sun, lives on less than, I think it was like less than $2 a day, less than a dollar a day, something like, something less than $3, definitely less than $3 a day. Less than $3 a day. And I can guarantee you, myself included, we probably peed out $3 in something, you know, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> is it a subscription? Is it a game? Is it um, a vice? Is it, uh, you know, that next meal that we didn't really need, but we wanted a snack, so we snatched something. We have so much privilege. We have so much opportunity. We have so much. We have lost perspective. We have lost perspective as a society. My suggestion to help us, what do we need to do to heal the relationship that we have with ourselves is walk a mile in someone else's shoes. 
is, is where I'm going to go straight with that. Walk a mile in someone else's shoes just so that you can understand how blessed how blessed you are to be watching this video, how blessed you are to be breathing right now, how blessed you are to even go through decision fatigue, that you have so many options that you don't know what option to make, how much of a blessing that actually is. Sometimes it's just a bit of perspective and maybe that's volunteering at your local, you know, shelter, your local, um, oh God, I, the first thought was women's shelter, uh, women's, uh, like domestic abuse, uh, abuse, excuse me, domestic abuse shelters, volunteering there, um, volunteering any homeless uh, shelter or maybe even in endangered, maybe not endangered, but troubled youth center. Like look at other people who don't have the things that you have. If you can't do that and you want to just stick strictly to YouTube, do a series of videos about um, other countries, uh, maybe about some um, historical components. I was just watching something about the Spanish flu yesterday. Um, look at uh, re up your historical education around the Holocaust. Um, re up your education um, about apartheid. Um, uh, oh my gosh, there's so much just to help us put things in perspective, just to help us put things in perspective. Question number five is what else do we need to know? What else do we need to know? Your relationship with yourself, this is the full card, and the full card is at the beginning of his journey, and I'm pretty certain this card showed up for us then, too, on Instagram. Anyway, I'm just kind of fizzy that it's showing up for us again. But this card, what else do we need to know? Self-love, our relationships with ourselves, our relationships with others, our relationships in general, it's a journey. It's not a destination. Our relationship is not a finish line that you can go and cross. It is a perpetual, organic, dynamic, growing, shifting, evolving, changing, flipping, flying, all sorts of kind of things. And you are on a, I'm not going to say path because that denotes one. You are on a field trip. <laughs> you are on a road trip. Um, you are on a grand adventure. And it does not matter what road you take. It does not matter which way you go. It does not matter where, even which direction you're headed in. It doesn't. It's a journey. It's your journey. It's a journey. So keeping that in mind, understanding that this is never going to end and that you can never be wrong at doing this. You can, it, it just takes time. It just takes Oh gosh, sorry, the, the words came to me for a hot second. Um, something that Abraham Hicks says all the time is that it's never you can never do it wrong because you can never get it done. So it's never finished. It's never something that is just, oh, okay, I'm done with self-love now. I'm great. <laughs> so it's something to remember. That was the point that I was trying to make just there. So for card number six is advice on how to begin. How can we begin this journey of self-love? This card was there too. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is kind of cool. So advice on how to begin is the eight of cups and the eight of cups. I'm going to show it to you. This is about walking away. So this is, can be abandoned successes, abandoned. Um, my mentor said abandoned successes. I think it's leaving anything that doesn't serve us anymore, regardless of the stage of development it's in. I sometimes hear about people who have these careers that no longer suit them, no longer fits who they are, and they struggle with guilt, a lot of guilt, for leaving that career because they've already invested so much. Honey, your sanity is worth saving. Your heart is worth saving. So whatever it is that you feel the need to let go, to snip away, to cultivate, you know, off, go ahead and take those actions. Take those steps. Take those beginning me me ah, measures and do those methods so that you can begin to move forward. Don't allow anything to hold you back from where you want to be. Start one foot right now in the direction of where you want to go. Full stop. What do you want to do? Do you not know it? Do you not know what that is? Write it down. Journal to yourself till the cows come home to get some clarity, get some information. Come talk to me. I'll even chat with you about it. Like walk away from what does not serve you so that you can go towards where you want to be, where, what makes your heart fizzy. Again, we have an enormous amount of privilege in this country. We have the ability to choose what we're going to do for the rest of our month, our year, our lives. Why not enjoy it? 
why not like what we're doing? And if you have a million reasons as to why not, good, and then what? <laughs> Add to it, make something more of it, do something more with it. Anywho, I'm gonna get off that soapbox because I talk about that a lot. And advice on how to thrive. Advice on how to thrive. Oh, the three of wands. Okay, I'm excited about this card because it's a card that shows up for me personally a lot. It talks about me personally a lot. But when this card shows up to me, I think a lot about it in relation to finding a point of view, finding a hill that you've climbed to the top of, and then looking out into the distance to kind of see what your future can be like. Find what's above and beyond the horizon. Sometimes you just need a taller vantage point. So does that mean finding a lot of, there's lots of ways to do it, like getting around people who are doing what you want to do. It also could be like getting on YouTube and start watching reseller vi videos. It could also be watching um, other Etsy sellers that are doing the same type of craft that you're doing. It could be um, studying you know, the comic that you adore because you also want to be a comic. So it's like getting that higher vantage point, getting that taller perspective, doing things that might scare you a little bit puts things in perspective puts things in perspective so you get that other <sighs> you can't always do what you've never seen done but you can get an idea and then your imagination can take you from there so if you can just get a glimpse of the life that you're looking for if you can just get a glimpse of the the north star that you really want to attain this is the card that that reminds us to do that so whatever that means for you whatever that meant that literally means for you for me that often means watching others who are doing what i want to do and let me find how i can do it better that's how I want how I want to continue to evolve is being the best that I can at what I do and then also watch others to see and get ideas and get perspectives and get point of view. What do I want what I love about that? What do I yeah, I may not use that. That's a wonderful method. It's not cheating, it's evolution, you know? So get a vantage point, find a vantage point, find a mentor, whatever you need to do, stand on the shoulders of others so that you can continue to move forward. That is what <laughs> this reading is about today with the relationship with ourselves. Oh my gosh. I'm a little excited about that. Please feel free to go ahead and comment below. Tell me what you thought about that. What was your impressions? What did you gain out of this reading? And so also, because I still want to talk about these cards, ah, Oracle of Echoes. So this was like our final message, if I remember that correctly, or anything else that we needed to know. So I have, ooh, creative space. The biggest thing that I find when it comes to uh, relationships with ourselves, or even, gosh, anything that is going on in our head is making time and making room for it. So if I could, if, if anybody, if you ever have a, the, the room in your house that you can go and meditate, if you have a little corner of your bedroom that you can cultivate, that's just that perfect little art space for you, whatever you need to do, create space, create space. Your, it does not have to be big. It can even be tiny. It's like the width of your hips. It does not matter how big the space is. Create space, create time, create room to do the thing it is that you want to do with your life. And I think that has a lot to do with your relationship with yourself. Even if it's like self-care, even if it's about, oh my God, there's a million things that it could be. There's a million things that it could be. But yes, please create space for yourself. What else? Oh, honey. Okay. So this card is the sorrow card. I'm going to show it to you. Because what I find with this card and the first thing that comes to mind is the sadness that we, we often have because we have allowed ourselves to let go of our dreams, let go of the things that we've always wanted to do. Myself included, I have let go of quite a few dreams and kind of mourn them sometimes because, okay, oh, I remember then when I felt fearless enough to dream that big to do those things until I squished myself into a small little tiny box that doesn't believe in those things over there. So if you have those moments, if you have those, those wounds, allow yourself the opportunity to cry about it. Let your younger version of yourself be sad about it. I'm often sad that I couldn't finish my uh, ballet career, but we also can move on from here. So go ahead and purge those emotions, go through those emotions, feel all of them. And again, another big hug to you because I know you'll probably need it. Allow yourself to feel that. Allow yourself to feel that. Last thing, vulnerability. Interesting. So I want to know what this is about because I don't, I'm not quite clear. So let's see. What do you want me to know about vulnerability? 
Oh my gosh. So relationship with ourselves. Vulnerability is all about our relationship with ourselves and not just ourselves, but with others. So that's a wonderful message because often it starts from here. It starts there. Our relationships with anybody starts at a space of vulnerability, not um, vulnerability like they are going to immediately hurt you because they see any vulnerability, but more of like, I'm putting myself out there for you. This is what it is. This is the truth and the honesty of who I am. And then see how they respond. See how they react. See how you are received. Let's see what else needs to come up for that. Hmm. Tower card. Okay. Relationship with ourselves. Vulnerability. So with vulnerability, I often am reminded that we have to dismantle the way things were so that the way things are can grow. So that the way things are can build, can be rebuilt. What else do we need to know about vulnerability? What else do we need to know? All right. What else do we need to know? Another thing about vulnerability is accountability. <laughs> First, we got to take responsibility and ownership for our current stats. That state, states, there we go, for our current state of being. Otherwise, no shift, no dismantling, nothing can occur. Nothing can occur. Star, page of pentacles. Knight of Pentacles, Temperance, Knight of Wands. Okay, Three of Pentacles. So I'm asking about vulnerability. What do you want me to know? Because the star with the Page of Pentacles, to me, this feels like daydreams. The things that we're focusing on, the, the things that we're paying all of our attention on, the things that we are nurturing, those are the things that will continue to grow. I often feel like we have to be willing to be vulnerable with ourselves so that we even know what those things are. What were those, the other cards? It's temperance and Knight of Pentacles. I feel like so often we turn off our dreams because we have a financial component to it that we're not able or willing to figure out or maintain. Um, whatever dreams, whatever daydreams that you've been mulling over, that you've been trying to do, that you've been trying to work on, that has a financial end to it, you have the ability to find the perfect ingredients. It's just making that way possible. Making it possible. Find, like looking under every rock, asking every person, exhausting all measures, working through every option possible. There is always a way. You just got to find it. You just got to get creative. You just got to maybe flip something else to do it. But it is possible. It is always possible. And the Knight of Wands to kind of wrap this up regarding to vulnerability. To me, that's just the full on go card. This card has so much movement, so much energy, so much gusto. It's just telling you to get to it. <laughs> get to it. Get to it, darlings. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much for commenting. If you have, if you haven't liked or subscribed, please feel free to go ahead and do that. And you will see me again here very, very soon. You take care. Bye.